Problem two on the practice exam is a multiple linear regression problem. So we'll start by just zooming in on this first part of the problem here and take a look at that. So we've got, like I said, a multiple linear regression model and we're looking to explain the variation in attendance at the basketball games and we've got some data here in our table. What uh, problem A or part A is what percentage of total variation is explained by the model that's R squared, right? So that is the, uh, we can look at that or find that value looking at the sum of squares column. And we're going to take the regression sum of squares um, over the total sum of squares. Okay, so we would have 5, 3, 2, 3, 0, 0, 5, 9, over 6, 8, 6, 5, 3, 7, 2, 4. And that's going to be 0.775. So that 77.5%, right, is the percent of variation explained by the model. That's the overall model, right? This is a multiple linear, linear regression, so we have multiple variables. But the overall model, 77.5% um, is explained by the variables in the model, which are right down here team win-loss percentage, opponents win-loss percentage, games played, and temperature. Okay, uh, so then uh, the next question is part B, what variable would be on the y-axis, your dependent variable? Okay, so what we're looking to explain here, the dependent variable is attendance at basketball games, so that is the answer to part two. Attendance would be on the y-axis, that's our dependent variable. Okay, so now the next question is, the overall model is or is not significant based on alpha 0.05? Okay, if alpha is 0.05, is this model significant? All right, so when we look at for the overall model significance, right, that is our F test, which is in this part of the table right here. And so that's when we're looking at the overall model. What does that tell us here? The overall model, our calculated F is 9.49073 uh, oh, okay so 9.49 or nine and a half just about is our calculated F statistic the probability of that result is 0. 0.0014 and therefore since uh, 0. 0.0014 is less than 0. 0.05 our alpha we would reject the null. Okay, so we would say this: the model is significant overall, and our answer was based on the significance F column. Okay, so this is the question: is seeing if you know where you're looking in the model. So if you're guessing on is is not, you have to know where it's coming from to get the right or the complete right answer. All right. Now I'm going to bump this down a little bit so we can do the rest of the problems or have some space to do those. Identify the correct regression equation in the model. Okay, so that is y hat is going to be equal to, and we get this right out of the coefficients, this column right here. And so we're going to have um, 14122.24 that's where it crosses 0, plus 63.15, and that's the uh, times the uh, t team win. That will say that's variable one here. Well, yeah, that's the easiest way to do it on this screen here. Um, so x1 plus, and so this, well, maybe I'll label them right here. So we'll say x1, x2 is opponent win loss, x3, and x4 is temperature, okay? So uh, then, uh, Opponent win loss is plus 10.1 x2 plus 31.51 x3, which is games played, and then minus 55.46 x4. All right, so the reason that's minus 55.46 uh, x4 is, of course, because this is a negative. The temperature is negatively correlated, that, right? So the game attendance is is uh, less when probably the temperature is colder, I would guess, right? When 
when the team has a good uh, winning percentage, when the team is doing well, there's more attendance when you play a good opponent, right? That also draws people in. Also, the number of games played, if there's more on the line later in the season, perhaps, right? So those are things that we could speculate. But on the face of it, those things look like they make sense, uh, the way that the correlation is moving. Okay, so that's part D. This equation right here is the answer to part D. Okay, then it says, of the independent variables, all non-2 or 1, okay, are statistically significant, all right? And my answer is based on the following column in the table below. Okay, so where we would want to look here, um, well, we could have a T statistic, right, and compare it to this column. Uh, what we really want to look at here is because alpha is 05, we'll look at this column, and then we will know anything here in our independent variables that is less than 0.05 would be significant. So let me answer the second part of this question first. We're looking at the p-value column, right, to, to know which ones, which ones are less than 0.05. Okay, so we want to know which independent variables uh, have a probability probability of less than 0.05. Okay, so which ones do? Um, all right, so team win-loss, okay, that one does, right? That's 0, 0, 1, 4. And then opponent win-loss, that's 0. 0.49, so that does not. Games played, 0. 0.86, that does not. And temperature also does not. Okay, so three are not significant. All right, so... Uh, because there's only one that is less than 0.05, then we can say that that is truly a, a, a significant result there of the independent variables. So we are going to say then on the last part of this question that one is statistically significant, meaning the team win-loss percentage, okay, x1 in our equation, and the answer was based on the p-value column. All right, so now we can move on to the second part of this. Okay, we're calculating the variance inflationary factor here, the VIF, okay? So um, we're seeing if the, any of these independent variables um, uh, are correlated with one another, okay? And so for that, we need these various R-square values comparing um, variables. And so for the team win-loss percentage, we have 0.337, um, and so on down the line here, and I'll calculate one of these here for us. So um, we would then have, we're going to have um, for team win loss, whoops, for team win loss, we'll start with that one, the VIF would be 1 over 1 minus 0.337, and that is going to be, that will be equal to, 1.51. Okay, so this is 1.51 for our first one. And then if we repeat that, uh, for the next one we would have 1 over 0.239, excuse me, 1 minus 0.239. And that result is going to be 1.31. Uh, okay, so 1.31. And games played, we'll just do these the same way. So the next two would be 1.96, 1.96, and the last one is 1.57, again, using this equation right here. Well, this equation and plugging in these numbers, the R-squared numbers for these um, R-squared for the independent variables. Okay, based on these answers for the VIF, multicollinearity exists between all, none, or two of these independent variables. Uh, in this case, if 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 is greater than five, then we would have the multicollinearity. Okay, and since none of these are greater than five, we would say none here. However, if if we find multicollinearity, what should we do? We need to remove remove independent variables and rerun the model. Okay, so that's what we would need to do there. All right, and then the last part of the question here is you decide to add conference, okay, to your analysis, a non-quantitative variable, okay, so the conferences, the types being Big West, Pac-12, and Big 10, okay. 
based on this information, you've got how many dummy variables to the model. Okay, so remember we always, when we're creating a dummy variable, that is, um, if big west, then one, otherwise zero. If pack 12, then one, otherwise zero. And then we would just we would just need those two because then if our if our for the third one for big ten if both these are zero right then we then we could deduce then big ten if both zero then big ten okay so in that case so we would need two dummy variables and we could deduce the third one from that right so we always do one less uh, dummy variable than categories being added. Okay, so the answer to this one then would be two. We've got two is the answer to I. Uh, the, we, would, we have three conferences we're adding, so we need two dummy variables to then figure out uh, which conference uh, is being played.